Badger will read from the Book of Psalms. Psalm 91. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God is the good shepherd and knows our needs. He leads us into green pastures and beside still waters and sustains us when we're in trouble. In this sinful world, evil always troubles us. It is written that none is righteous. No, not one. But redemption is assured to all who repent through the blood of Jesus Christ. So let us now offer our good confession before God and one another. Can we pray together? Most merciful Father, you know our sins. Forgive us for what we have done and for what we have left undone. Your face is too often hidden from us by our transgressions, and we ask that you help us to remember your mercy in the blindness of our hearts. Cleanse us from all our offenses Deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, and help us to live out of your goodness. We humbly ask to be drawn nearer to you, confessing our faults, confident in your grace, and finding in you our refuge and strength through Jesus Christ, your Son. Help us to see that we are your beloved children, beautifully created in your image, and a testimony to your glory. Amen. The psalmist tells us that God's goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Friends, believe this good news. God's mercy is sure and his goodness will fill our lives and empower us to love God and our neighbors as ourselves. For we are assured that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Cheryl Dowdy is going to read from uh, the Gospel of John, and then we'll hear the Word of God from Pastor Mark. This is John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. 
the word of God. Thanks be to God. It's always good to see a, a, a bottle that has the cap on it that you have to work on getting off. I may have told you one Sunday at United Churches, there was a bottle and I took a swig of it and it was vodka. <laughs> Somebody had played a trick on the pastor. I didn't, I didn't finish it then. <laughs> Saved it for later. <laughs> Well, thank you again. Uh, what a privilege it is for Cheryl and me to be down with you and to uh, share our lives with each other and uh, hear what God has to say to us in so many, many different ways during the worship time. Uh, thank you so much for the music. Uh, it's great to have, have the wonderful piano music and uh, keyboard music and uh, um, it's, it's nice. And it's nice to sing together, isn't it? Again, uh, Amen. it's always a, a part, wonderful part of worship. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts now be acceptable to you, O Lord, and of instruction and hope for us. Amen. Power, name, and love. These words weave through this week's text. Their interrelationship presents a rich depiction of the saving work of the divine among us. The name of Jesus Christ holds power. And the power of Jesus resides in love. And the love of God through Jesus exerts influence in us and over us. And our call then is to love to exercise our power in acts of love toward one another. The web continues to interweave and to be strengthened as it moves. The opening four verses of the chapter set the scene for Acts 4, 5 through 12, in which the prisoners, Peter and John, have been arrested and held in custody by temple officials as a result of their teaching and preaching about the resurrection. And uh, this much annoying sermon was recounted in part in the reading, I think last week, of, uh, out of Acts 3. In the, face of, in the face of questioning, Peter responds at first with an implicit censure of his interrogators. How is it that a good deed has become bad? In their fixation on a perceived challenge to the established authority and doctrine, these religious leaders are unable to see the miracle that has taken place in their midst in the man Jesus. Continuing his response, Peter reasserts the claim that has landed him in this interrogation that the source of his power is the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth. To know, to call upon, to believe the name is a reoccurring theme in Acts 4, in Psalm 23, 3, and in 1 John 2, 23. Power to speak and power to act, power to be bold, power to follow, power to love are all connected to the belief in the saving power of the name of God and the name of Jesus Christ. The rejected cornerstone quotation in verse 11 is from Psalm 118, 22. Jesus also quotes the verse self-reverentially referentially in each of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's an ancient metaphor 
with new interpretation in new context on Jesus' part. Psalm 23, I know for probably all of us, is a much loved and undoubtedly one of the most well-known passages in the Bible. And on this Good Shepherd Sunday, which is, that's what today is, the image of God as shepherd inspires trust and confidence, but it doesn't deny the multiple sustained threats to that security. Thus, I think that we would do well to take care that our familiarity with this psalm does not give way to some kind of sentimentality. It has much more power than that. In this psalm's culminating verse, <clears throat> the writer is daily, daily pursued, no longer by en enemies, but by God's goodness and steadfast, faithful love or as the New Revised Standard Version has it, mercy. The command in 1 John 3, 16 to 24 is clear. Love one another. Love sacrifices. Love attends to the economic reality of our siblings. Love moves boldly. Love shows obedience to God's way. And this multi-layered love for one another has God's love as its source and its model. In essence, however, its essence, however, is to be expressed outwardly in word and in deed and in action. For love is a verb. Love is a verb. It's something that we do. In a familiar way to Psalm 23, John 10, 11 through 18, is this passage whose familiar comforting message exists in some tension with its context. Echoing Peter's experience in Acts 3 and 4, and John 9 through 10, uh, or John 9 through 10, uh, recounts Jesus' healing of a blind man, followed by a contentious discussion with religious leaders in which Jesus employ, employs metaphors, which he often does, of sheep and sheep tending to attempt to reveal himself to the entrenched leaders who, in a lot of what Jesus said, just didn't get it. A good shepherd's love for the sheep bears the same quality as those described in 1 John 3, sacrificial, bold, power, power-filled. That's the good shepherd's love. Furthermore, the shepherd is not the shepherd uh, only of these sheep. One flock, one shepherd, says verse 16, but other sheep, ultimately all sheep, belong to the shepherd. Contrary to the power exerted by human structures, the power of this resurrected Jesus Christ resides in his saving love for all humanity. The power of his love embold, emboldens our acts of love in a world filled of people who have been disempowered and ill-loved. So I have a question. How can we you here in this place, and Cheryl and me and, and others in other places, how can we individually and communally enact our love in service to those who have been systematically excluded and oppressed? I'm gonna talk, talk with you about that, so I'm gonna get a little closer. And, and let me ask that again. 
How can we individually and communally, this community, enact our love and service to those who have been systematically, systematically excluded and oppressed? How do we do that? Lend a hand. Pardon? Lend a hand. Okay. Yeah. Our women's group does a Mother's Day basket for through the elementary school for a mother who is struggling. And we always put in there that that whoever receives that basket is held up in prayer and love before the right. Lord by the Presbyterian women. Good. Our food bank. Sometimes I, you know, uh, sometimes I think we're reticent to to ask, for instance, a family member or a friend, "Hey, some things are happening down there at the Presbyterian Church in in in, in uh, Toledo. Is this Toledo or Toledo? <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> Toledo. You know, come on, come on down, see what's happening there. You know." Um, there's, there are a lot of things that we can do uh, like that to, uh, to share that with other people. Any other ideas on that? How do we enact our love and service? Yeah. Well, I think Sandy kind of touched on it. Uh, one, one of the people groups that is, uh, uh, you might say, systemically oppressed is people who live in poverty. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to break out of that. And uh, it's almost like everything is, you know, geared against getting out of it. And, and I think that one thing we can do, uh, and it's really easy, but what is simple, is not be contemptuous of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Where I live, uh, I work with the garden club, and on May Day, we give out baskets with flowers and little gifts uh, to each of the shut-ins in our community. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. And they look forward to it. And last year with the pandemic, just having it, it was uh, just a few of us that did it, but now the whole group is doing it. Sure. I'd like to see the church serving in those ways in the community. Yeah, sure. Um, the, the same vein as, as his is something that's really important to me is to accept anyone and everyone for who they are and what they are and not who we would like them to be. That's why we've been married for almost 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> She's had to accept me for who I am. That is true. <laughs> Sometimes more difficult than others. Sometimes more difficult than others, yes. <coughs> well, sometimes it is difficult. Oh, uh, yes. Our support of the Lewis County Gospel Mission, mm -hmm. who deals with the most fragile yeah. parts of our society in this county, and it feels good anything we can do to help. I know now we financially, monthly support, but the different drives and needs of this congregation support is vital. challenge, isn't it? Yeah. But my sense is, and listening to your stories, that if you know somebody in the community who is ill or in a need, that you know that you're there. I hear your stories. And uh, I think that a church that lives in isolation is not really a church that 
that uh, God wants us to be a part of, but to uh, be the ecclesia, which means what? It's from exit. Ecclesia comes from the, the, the going out ones. Uh, and, and you do that. You're known for that. And boy, I just encourage you to keep that up and serve the people in the community because you're known for that here, let me tell you. Yeah. I went to a church in the Owaco. Oh, no, that's not the right family. Anyway, they were not very welcoming because we sat down in three different places and were told we were sitting in somebody's seat. <laughs> However, when you went out the door, there was a saying over the door, you are now entering the mission field. And that has oh. never left my heart. Yeah, as you leave the church, the mission as field is here, it's out there. years and years ago, we each had a seat. You you two have sat in this seat every Sunday that I've ever been here. Is this your seat? We bought and paid for it. What more can I say? <laughs> That's right, go for it. <laughs> he graffitied his name on it. Am I done? Yeah, you're still preaching. <laughs> no, I'm done. I'm done. That's enough. <laughs> To, uh, please stand again and we will sing um, hymn number 803 My Shepherd Will Supply My Needs. <laughs>
seated. Now Sandy Maskey will present a moment for mission. Good morning. Good morning. So the weather's going to warm up. I keep telling myself any minute. That's why I have leggings underneath my pants because <laughs> I am just like freezing. I just keep, I love those warm days when you get two or three of those and then you just go like, okay, I'm in the mood, right? I got it. I got it. And then it leaves us. And that's the dear sweet state of Washington. So, so speaking of on your sermon this morning, sir. Um, I just want you to know that last week I took by from PWC on behalf of PWC. I, we got the, we get newsletters from Lewis County Gospel Mission and they kept this one just item kept kind of wearing on me and I kept thinking, you know, that's a hard one. It's a hard item. And it was briefs. It's men and women's briefs. And I thought, okay, I can do this. So off I went to the store. Size large, size extra large. How many sizes could you get? I mean, you know, you kept thinking about this. And so I got size large, size extra large, and I got all kinds of variety. I got men, I got women, and now I know all of, all of those that need some briefs should have them. So I feel good about that. So on behalf of PWC, thank you very much for allowing me to do that for you. So that was very cool. Also, we do have the Mother's Day basket coming up. I'm going to gather it up today, and if you are um, inclined to help in any way with that basket, whether maybe it's a scarf, a pen, a box of cards, some lotion, it doesn't matter. Um, I'll be collecting that next Sunday at church, and then I take it over to the school. And I've been in contact with them, and they are so excited to have us back with our basket because we it was right in the beginning of the pandemic, and so we didn't do that last year so it's it's a thrill to do it again this year so today's little ditty after i'm boasting about pwc <laughs> is about the birthday offering now this is something that we collect at our meetings and of course we haven't had any meetings for a year but it's okay because i need to tell you where that money does go and it's um it's amazing PWC's birthday fund is almost, it's 99 years old, it's almost 100 years old, and um, it was it was started by a lady by the name of Haley Wisborough in 1922, and she challenged each member of the Women's Auxiliary of the Presbyterian Church of the United States to give a penny for each year of their birthday. Well, this went along just great for a number of years until the group got just a little bit older. And then there was always a big deal about putting your pennies in. And then all of a sudden, no one wanted to exactly say how many pennies they were putting uh -huh. in. So it got to be just a small little fund that developed. So they've been doing this for 100 years. So this year, I wanted to tell you where the money went. It's amazing. There is $150,000 going to the Garden Gate Ranch in Des Moines, Iowa. Sandy, this will come to your heart. The Garden Gate Ranch is a Christian organization that provides safe housing and, rest and restorative and transitional services for sexually exploited women and their children. The birthday offering will assist Garden Gate in their mission by providing a separate education center for programming, therapeutic services, and vocational rehabilitation. 150,000. To the Memorial Drive Ministries in Stone Mountain, Georgia. $77,061. Very important. They needed a new roof. Located in the most, the most diverse square miles in North America, Memorial Drive Ministries a partnership between the Presbyterian of Greater Atlanta and six other churches provides a welcome environment for the vibrant ministries they call the Memorial Drive Campus Home. The birthing offering grant will provide a desperately needed roof. It's leaking, so it's been hard to play with items like sewing machines, karate, dance, frisbee, badminton, basketball, and other after school activities. So this is a blessing to them. And 
to the Mission Hospital, the Women's Health Center, OBGYN Theater in Southeastern Africa. It provides services for those that are inspired by the love of Jesus Christ. The birth aid offering grant will provide funds for an obstetrics and um, gynecology Pacific operating room next to the existing maternity ward. Apparently in the past, if there was any complications with birthing or a mother that was in um, stress, they had to send them away. And it was many, many miles and miles, plus maybe another town or two. And so this new theater ward will provide funds to make sure that moms and babies can all stay together. Isaiah 49, 13 says, Sing, O joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted the people and will have compassion for the suffering ones. You know, we all have birthdays. Some we celebrate more than others. Can you just see the toddlers? I'm going to be four. I'm going to be four. And they're still stuck on that three. But any minute, I'm going to be four. Well, we may do that until we get to maybe our... 40s or 50s or 60s or 70s. So how old was Ruth the other day? 102. 102. I'll bet you if Ruth was in church, she'd say, I'm going to be 102. Because that's a milestone. I've heard other people say, well, I'm going to be 85. But I'm never going to tell you how old I am right now because, no, it's not important anymore. At some point, we do stop celebrating. That time of life depends on that person. We can celebrate with joy once again, though. Those who have faced life-threatening or illnesses, they proclaim more about those birthdays now because they met that milestone and how important it is for them. You know, when we're a, a child or, or a young adult, we get help from parents and grandparents and aunties and uncles, but above all, we get help from God. Presbyterian women are often God's hands and feet as we impact the lives of people in need in this country and in our neighborhood. The project's receiving funds, funds from the next, this year's 2021 birthday offering of helping others reach birthdays with safe births, safe homes, and a place to play. So I would just like to make a dedication prayer at this time and I do thank you all for um, the, the funds that you do support with for PWC, for the fact that I can buy those briefs and that we can do a, a Mother's Day basket and many other projects that we do. Creator God, we thank you and praise you, your holy name. We have been blessed beyond measure, and today we ask you to bless the gifts that are given to support the PWC birthday offering. We have special blessings on the lives we touch the women and their babies who are served by the new OBGYN Center in Africa, creating new birthdays, the Golden Gate Ranch in Iowa, where the creation of an education center will offer second chances and new hope for sexually trafficked women and children, and the Memorial Drive Ministries, where a new roof will provide a safe place for activities. We celebrate with you all the people who have served and those who will be enriched through these, gave, these gifts. In your most precious name, amen. amen. Will you stand for the offering, please? God has given to us freely of the goodness of God's creation. We now return a portion of these goods in the hope and promise that these resources will serve as God's commonwealth in our church, community, and the world.
and Redeemer God, we pray for the wisdom to be good stewards of the gifts you have given to us. Take these gifts, we pray, bless and use them to benefit others and to empower all work that is a testament to your holy name. Amen. Amen. Sandy Bacar is going to lead us in sharing our joys and concerns. And in Sal Bush, then we'll um, read the prayers of the people and lead us in the Lord's Prayer. As we bow our heads in prayer, we remember all the prayers and praises that were spoken and unspoken here today. God of the Easter season, you come to us with resurrection life to help us see that you are always the good shepherd whose goodness and mercy follows us all of our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer that all learn to know and love your church. Empower us to serve you faithfully and be the place where wounds are touched, attended to, released, liberated, and redeemed. We pray for the people of every nation throughout the earth, that they may see and feel your glory. Empower us to live according to your great commandment, to love you with our whole being, and to love ourselves as we love others. Father, living in this troubled world of sin is difficult. Through sin, we all face difficult times. We know you answer all prayers, but we are reminded that our prayers are not always answered right away, or the result isn't always the one that we had hoped for. God of mysteries, we know your divine wisdom always provides the right answer to our prayers, even if we don't always understand. Remind us, O oh God, to hold fast and to keep believing during our difficult times. For we know you are the God of miracles, the God who delights in answering our prayers, even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we need not fear, for you are always with us. As we need healing, we know that our helper and deliverer is always but a prayer away. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit and for Jesus, who promises to always be our rock through life's storm. For we know his gentle and loving hand will always be there to lift us up. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And give us not our temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand, please, as we sing our last hymn, number 187. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
forth into the world in peace, knowing that God's goodness and mercy follow us. Love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. Lift up the broken in spirit, and let us do everything out of the love of God, which we know in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.